Hello, this is Frank Whitmer, Birdie Precision. Today I'd like to talk some about the backed IP models of the Optimizer Unitary and VAV controllers by Honeywell. So today we'll be working with Unitary controller and the named right now Spider 7, but Spider 7 VAV, but will be or is going is getting renamed to the Optimizer VAV, which we will be referring to it as during this video. So we might as well get started. So the back that IP models of controllers, you get two flavors. We have an Ethernet version, which is your standard um, Ethernet with two switched ports on the controller, where you can daisy chain or home run right back to a network switch and communicate that way. The other is something newer um, that came out with the Optimizer Unitary and uh, VAV in the future is T1L, which is a two-wire Ethernet. So think of the controller just like a standard backnet IP controller, but the media is it's communications across a pair of wires, not a standard Ethernet patch cable. Um, and each controller has two, um, two T1L ports on it, terminal strips. And when there's no power or the controller fails, it passes the data through. So when you daisy chain a T1L controller, and you have one in the in the daisy chain that uh, that fails or or the power is removed, uh, communication will still occur through the rest of the controllers. Um, in the Ethernet models, with the uh, the switched port that those have on them, if you lose power to any one of those controllers, you lose communications to anything downstream because of the fact that you have no way to pass the data across those two ports. So that's one of the, another big difference. Um, Ethernet standard Ethernet, you've got. Uh, Roughly 300 feet between devices, or between switch and devices. T1L, you have 1,000 feet, basically 300 meters uh, between devices. So it's a very, uh, a very good means of, of communication. Great way to reuse existing wire um, to be able to run back that IP. Uh, so with the, obviously, back that IP controllers, you have IP addressing that you have to deal with on the controllers. Out of the box, the controllers are set up for DHCP. So whatever the DHCP server sets up for the IP address, that's what gets assigned to the controller. If there is no DHCP server available, after 15 seconds, it's going to go to a default address. And that default address is going to be 169.254.1. A number. And the way that works is if you look at the serial number, and I have an example on here, um, of one of my uh, the unitary controllers. The last two digits is 14. This serial number is actually a hexadecimal number. Uh, so the number 14, the last two digits, you want to convert them to decimal, and that'll be what you use for that third octet, or the fourth octet in the IP address. Uh, so in the example here, it's 14, and if you use your Windows calculator, set it for programmer mode, you enter 14 hex, it'll show you the decimal value is 20. So when you do your address, you're gonna, that controller will come up as 169.254.1.20. Um, and so the real the thing there is just making sure you look at your serial number, get those last two numbers. Typically, you're going to have your calculator. It's going to come up like this. Quickly go in there, set it for programmer, and we say, okay, what number do we have? I've got a second one here, and it is 18 hex. So if we do hex and we punch in 18, the, its IP address is going to be 169.254.1.24. So it's that simple in figuring out what the addressing is. And then for your computer to be able to talk to the controllers, if you don't have DHCP, you have to make sure you set up your IP settings correctly. Um, so because you're on that subnet 169.254.1 on the controllers, you obviously need to set up your PC the same way. One big change or one big thing to look for and to make sure you do is set the subnet mask for 255.255.0.0. If you set it for three 255s and then a dot zero, you're not gonna find your controllers. I have found that when you have it set that way, you can ping it, command prompt, command prompt, you can go in there, type in the IP address, it'll respond, no problem at all but BACnet will not recognize um, the controller's uh, addressing. 
So as long as your computer is set up for 255.255.0.0, you should be able to communicate just fine. Once you have that done and you go in and discover and bring the controllers into Niagara, you can go in and change the IP addressing in two different ways. You can go to your nav tree and look at your controller. There should be an IP settings slot there. You can go to IP configuration from there, or you can go to your IRM tool, uh, device manager view. And from there, you can pick, you select your controller, and then you would select IP config, and it would bring up the dialog box to change from DHCP to static or static to DHCP, and you can make your changes from there. Uh, from that, let's go ahead and look at the controller and look at the actual Niagara uh, workbench. So if we go back in here and I have my network set up, well, before we do that, let's double check a couple things. I will go into my Ethernet port on my computer, my NIC card, and verify that I have the addressing set properly. So I set my PC to 169.254.1.200. And again, the subnet mask 255.255.0.0. So we're all set there. Obviously, when you work with in backnet IP, you have to make sure you have your link set up correctly. So if we go into the IP port, go under link, I'll make sure that I'm set up there correctly. And I do have that one. You can see by the IP address. If you set your address on your computer, but when you go here to the adapter and you don't find it, or you find it and it doesn't come up with the IP address, just right click on link, add actions, and then do a query for adapters. It'll go out and recheck all the, uh, the, the uh, ethernet ports on your computer. And then you can select it and it'll show the right, the right uh, address there. So now if I go back to my IRM uh, backnet device manager, I could do a discover. Go ahead and discover my network number is one for IP. And we should find a VAV controller and a uh, unitary controller in there and they came up and you'll see here our IP addressing you'll see where our serial numbers are so you can see the 18 I converted that to hex I mean from hex to decimal and that's where we came up with the 24 the 14 here in hexadecimal then we converted that to decimal and that came up as 20 and that's exactly what those IP addresses came in as um, Another thing, if you have a bunch of controllers you're trying to work with and these come up, but you don't know which one's which, there's a service pin ranking that's available. And on the controllers, there is a service pin or a service button. You'll see on the VAV one, it's a round circle, a round button. You can press that. And over on the unitary controller, we have the button on there as well. So what we would do is when you go in to do your discover, I'll say go ahead discover and I'm going to hit the buttons. I'm going to hit my unitary first and I'm going to hit then the VAV controller. And then when it's finished, it should show the order of me pressing the button. So in this case, I found I have a, if there's the service pin ranking for number one, I depress unitary first and there is my second one. So now if I come through here, I'll take the two, I'll take my two controllers and I will drop them on my network. Close up that and we can see now our two controllers are there and we have, you see I don't have anything in the controller yet. I don't have an application in there. I just have my, um, just the controllers brought in directly out of the box. Um, one of the things you'd want to look at probably now is firmware revision. Make sure you're at the latest firmware and if you're not, you're going to want to uh, go and, and select the controller, go to download firmware, and pick the current firmware that's available and get that set up in the controllers. But let's say now we're at the point where we don't necessarily want to keep this um, IP address scheme, so we could go in one of two ways. We can come over here into our tree, our nav tree. We can go down into a controller. We can go to IP settings from there and actually make our changes from that screen. Or back on the device manager, we take a controller and we go down and select IP config. And this will allow us to go in and change it to, static, to a static IP address. We can make it whatever we want, whatever is required for the job site. And 
when you hit hit OK, it's going to update all that for you. And then you do the other controller as well. We would go in there, hit DHCP, or we leave it static. Um, and uh, and off your off to off your uh, off to getting this all set up and get your programming done and, and commissioning the system. Um, I think that's everything on that for now. If you have any questions or concerns, make sure you comment back to us or email us, and uh, be happy to uh, to respond. Again, it's Frank Whitmer, Brody Precision, and thank you for your time.